Have you ever had the feeling of being loving someone so much that you start to clinch and control and create drama and scenarios to affirm how much they love you, which in turn makes them feel like backing away from you, which in turn makes you feel like maybe this is the wrong relationship. But the truth is, is that all of that was led by your wounds. Rastafari blessings and blessings beautiful humans if you are thinking about breaking up with your partner or getting a divorce this podcast is for you now I want to start by saying that relationships conscious relationships relationships in general are some of the hardest things to navigate on the planet there is nothing that i have ever encountered that is more challenging than sidestepping my own trauma my own wounds my own shame and guilt and stepping back into a room and deciding to show up for my wife's nervous system that is not for the faint of heart there is a level of courage and power that exists when one hmm, continuously opens their heart. When the, when the deep wound, when the childhood wounding, when the shame, the toxic shame shows up and says, close it, close it and run, close it and leave. You see, we all, can come up with a million reasons as to why we should leave, why we should go. But I want to remind you and bring you back to why you started. And what a blessing, what a gift out of 7.7 .7 billion people on the planet. You were gifted with the assignment of holding this person's heart. Out of all the people that you've ran into, all the, all the people that you coincidentally come across, this person is the one that the universe chose for you to do the work, the deep work, the work that cannot be done outside of relationship. Now, I'm not saying that you should stay in an abusive relationship. I am saying, however, that sometimes what we deem abuse is our tricky egos crafting stories and narratives to keep us in the victim role and our partners in the villain role. And so if you're going to leave, leave at the top. If you're going to leave, leave being the leader of your relationship. If you're gonna break up, break up when the grown man, the grown woman is in the room. Because more than likely the thought of breaking up and all the stuff that's coming up around that is connected to the seven-year-old and the 14-year-old that felt neglected, the 18-year-old that was raped there's more happening here. You brought an entire world with you when you met your partner. And all those wounds, and all that shame, and all that trauma, and all the things that were attached to it showed up in your relationship because that's what it's built for. We've been bamboozled into the idea that relationships are just supposed to be airy-fairy in the moment you meet your person. Oh, I met my one. Oh my God, you're married now. Oh, I met my one. You think that that's the moment where all the problems go away. And oh my goodness, it is almost the exact opposite. Have you ever had the feeling of being loving someone so much 
that you start to clinch and control and create drama and scenarios to affirm how much they love you which in turn makes them feel like backing away from you, which in turn makes you feel like maybe this is the wrong relationship. But the truth is, is that all of that was led by your wounds. So yeah, go ahead and leave. Go ahead and break up, but don't do it until the adult is in the room. Don't do it until you've asked for help. Until you've asked for space. Don't do it until you've set up a ecosystem that feels good for you and feel good and feel good and feels good for them. A part of why you may be running is you think that there's only one option, which is the way that it has been. And so you've been withholding, you've been withholding your love. You've been withholding your presence. You've been bracing. You've been um, defending, justifying, and judging your partner without actually sharing. You've acquiesced. Both of you have been programmed to believe that you need each other. And that's partially true, and it's also not true. Your job is to take care of the alignment with inside of you and the alignment with the ecosystem. You cannot control or take care of your partner. You take care of your partner by taking care of you. You take care of your partner by being mindful of the ecosystem that you created, the third entity, which is your relationship. That's how you take care of your partner. So then everything, right? That's you. That's the cake. Your partner, anything your partner puts in your space, that's the cherry on top. That's the sprinkles on top, but you take care of the cake. The cake is your job. Your cup full, your cup overflowing is the best gift you could give humanity and anyone you are in a romantic relationship with. I understand there has been a lot of wounding, a lot of pain, a lot of really mean things said in the heat of arguments. And I want to remind you that relationships are very nuanced and gray. If there's one thing I've learned in my 42 years of being on this planet, it's that the black and white that we think things are is often bull. It's often not true in any sense of the word. So I invite you to come up with a plan with your partner. I invite you to bring to them as much honesty and brutal honesty as you can. I invite you to trust them again with your deepest, darkest secrets. I invite you to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I invite you to remind them that you're proud of them, that you love them, that you appreciate them. I also invite you to find a photo album and go through those memories with your partner. Talk about and relive and remember all of the magic that occurred before you two became roommates slash enemies. And if you have children, I want to remind you, 67% of couples break up within the first year of having a child. I have four. And so if you think I'm speaking from theory, I'm not. We have been through it and we're still here, still standing, still committed to each other. And I'll leave you with this. If you don't want to run, if you don't want to break up, you're probably not playing full out anyway. So I want to congratulate you because the fear that's coming up, the future casting, the stories you've making up about the next 20 years, 30 years, all of that is not because you don't care, it's because you do and you just haven't figured out how to make it work. You still haven't figured out how to create a win-win. 
You feel good. I feel good. We feel good. How do we do that? Can you help me? That's what you bring to your partner and the whole thing will shift. Blessings and blessings to each and every one of you. If this resonated in any way, I ask that you share it. Share it with your partner. Share it with your husband, your wife, your gender non-binary partner, whatever it is, whoever it is. Give them the gift of hearing this too and, and, and then discuss it. Because the biggest piece is you get to know that you're not alone. You, you're not special. You all are getting your butts kicked. But so is everybody else. And none of us got a manual on how to do this. And the divorce rate is so high because people have been trying to do it the right way. But there is no right way. You too get to write the script. You. There is literally no right way. The right way is what feels best for both of you. But we have to start with bringing all of this to the table and being honest about what is actually true and real. Blessings and blessings. I love you all so much. Uh, if you are interested in working with me, go to PrestonSmiles.com forward slash stretch dash 22. It's 22. I love you all.